Good morning, Memorial Road, and thank you for tuning in and being present with us this morning. We're thankful that you're here with us. I want to say it's a bizarre Sunday morning, but it's becoming quite normal in 2020. And so uh, just kind of coming to expect things like this and changes like this. I love to see the flexibility in our our church family and and, uh, the grace given to us as we make some changes here this morning. It's a very special day that I'll explain in just a second, but we continue a series this morning called Beyond the Building as we begin to think about what does it look like for our church family because of these circumstances to be beyond a building. And I love the, the, the vision for this because we've had to really try to restructure things and see what it looks like. It's really an elementary thought as it's something you learn as a kid that the church is not made up of a building, but it's made up of the people. And so as we are reminded of that and we have to kind of relearn that, we get used to our rhythms of Sunday and Wednesday and we get used to life and how it happens. And sometimes even in our evangelism approaches, we think that we have to bring someone to our building to share the love of Jesus with them. And this series is meant to remind us that it looks very differently. It's a different mindset sometimes for us to be outside the building and especially because of our circumstances with COVID-19 we've had to really rethink things. Uh, I've loved to watch it's been inspiring and encouraging to watch our families try to figure out how to be light in our community. It's been inspiring to watch all the ministries here at church rework things to figure out what does church look like for us outside of these walls and so we continue talking about that this morning. Last week, Phil and Will had a conversation about race in our culture right now and and race relations and how the church can lead in that. And we talked about how each individual plays a role in that and you and your life and your walk play a part in doing that. A special opportunity, I know many of you have thought about what can I do to um, help in that. And so Memorial Road is providing an opportunity for that tomorrow night at 7.30 on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. We're, we're hosting an event we're calling Amplify. Josh Kincaid, our education minister, will be hosting a panel where we're really just trying to listen to some of the black and brown voices of our church members here at Memorial Road. And it's really something, the whole conversation is something I'm trying to be uh, quick to listen and slow to speak on. And so this is an opportunity for us to listen, to think about Um, their voice, their perspective, their stories. And so I hope that you'll tune in for that. It will be recorded, but if you're like me, sometimes I don't always hit those recordings. So I'm hoping tomorrow night, 7.30, you can tune in and try to help that conversation and amplify their voice. Today is a really special day. As Andy mentioned, um, it's our Senior Blessing Day. And for many families here at Memorial Road, and especially for our youth ministry, it's a great opportunity for us because we've watched our students grow from a very young age as they've gotten older. And it's a, it's a way for us to bless them and, and congratulate them and honor them and what's been kind of a bizarre year for this year's 2020 seniors. And so I'm anxious at the end just to, to get to celebrate them, to pray over them. And so stay tuned for that here in just a few minutes. We'll read their names off and pray over them as well. It's another really big day for us. It's a big holiday. It's actually National Smoothie Day. And so I hope that you and your family can take time to hit a Jamba Juice today. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Andy mentioned it. It's Father's Day today. So if you're in the room, if you're in the living room with a father, say Happy Father's Day to someone really quickly. Father's Day is a really uh, special day. Um, as I've become a dad, the last, I have a 10 year old, so I've been a dad for 10 years, but it's also like something I begin thinking about more and more. And Father's Day becomes. Um, something I'm kind of evolving into as a dad because there are certain things that dads do. There are certain things that that dads just always have in their mind. There are a few what I would call dad laws. Uh, I want to walk through some of those for just a second with you, a few dad laws for you. A dad will use his child as an excuse to buy all the toys he secretly wants to play with himself and he's now able to buy them for him. And, and I love that he, this line, he laughs in the face of the upper age limit on the toy packaging. I love that thought because dads do that. My son Tate, uh, a year ago, wanted a bow and arrow, a crossbow for, for Christmas. He wanted to start hunting. And I, I was like, yeah, we can make that work. And so it's become a toy of mine as well. Uh, that next slide, uh, after tying stuff down on a truck, a dad it must declare, that's not going anywhere and grab a hold of the rope. I can hear my dad saying that now uh, before you tie something down. After you finish, you got to say that. 
Um, if a baby hands a dad a toy phone, he will stop what he's doing and take the call. Hello, what's that? Yeah, you want to talk to the boss? Here he is. And that's just the way it goes. I've tried to evolve this, and so anything my kids hand me, I can now turn into a phone. I'll give you a sample here. It's, is baby uh, case a couple years ago uh, that I turned into a phone and it's just a classic dad move that you have to make and that I've involved into something in our family. The next dad law on there, a dad is entitled to collect a fast food dad tax. Um, they're, they're obligated to, to get one chicken nugget, a few fries and all the fries from the bottom of the bag uh, is, is the dad tax. Um, a dad will never, never turn down an opportunity to tell kids how good GoldenEye was on Nintendo 64 and how it paved the way for modern day multiplayer games. Some of you get that. Some of you probably need to think more Atari, um, but it's, it, it is a classic dad line for us to think about. Uh, when using a power drill, a dad has to give it a couple revs um, and also kind of recite his favorite 80s line from a movie as he snaps in the battery clip on the drill all classic dad lines. Um, man, if anything breaks, a dad must declare they don't quite make them like they used to. Now you have to say that as a dad. Uh, a couple more here for you. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, there's a, a, a movie that you, you see on the screen here taken. Uh, our our culture has become obsessed with um, this idea of, of a dad. Uh, it's become obsessed with family, with moms, with dads, and it's kind of at a heightened level where uh, families will do anything at any cost uh, to take care of their kid. And in an exaggerated effort in this movie, Liam Neeson shows us and gives us a sample. If you've never seen it, it's a, a movie in which a government agent kind of goes rogue, uh, destroys lots of buildings, takes lots of lives in order to just save his daughter. And it's, it's kind of something that in our culture, if you'll flip to that next slide, it's kind of something in our culture that is just kind of taken over. Uh, it's, it's something that remains sacred, and rightly so. Jesus spoke to marriage, he spoke to family, he spoke to children, but it's become the greatest good. It's outweighing any moral or legal structures that stand in its way. And the family was also highly valued in the biblical world. The family was in some ways even more valued because it's what stood in the way of an individual and what, what was trouble sometimes, whether it be famine, whether it was food, clothing, shelter, whatever it was, it's, it's the group helped outweigh the individual. And so in some ways, even in biblical times, it far outweighed our current culture. But we've kind of created something of it, some obsession over it. And one of the many shocking things that Jesus did was he challenged the ultimacy of family. And although he recognized it as good, he said that he came to bring a sword that would separate parent from child and brother from brother. In what seems to almost be a cavalier fashion, he challenges a young man who's lost his father to forgo the funeral and follow him. And with such words, Jesus debunks the family as we know it. He changes our perspective and the way we see it as we go. And, and it's one of those things where he looks at several scriptures through the New Testament and we're, we're going to look at today and also several scriptures and words from Jesus that we'll narrow in on as we close in, in a few minutes here. But one in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Jesus points to, uh, or, or Paul points to this idea. He says, I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. And so he gives you a glimpse of one passage where God is giving us a vision for what family looks like. And it's beyond just our immediate family and goes into our church family, into God's family, which is what we're centering on this morning. This next passage in Ephesians says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. He gives us a glimpse of what it looks like to follow him in family. Galatians 6 says, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are in the household of faith. 1 Timothy 5 says, do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, in all purity. And then in Matthew 8, another disciple, as I mentioned, said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. And then while Jesus was talking to the crowd in Matthew chapter 12, we'll center on here for just a moment if you want to flip there. 
he has this moment that's kind of bizarre. Uh, it'd almost be, as you think about Father's Day, dads, it'd almost be like you waking up and no one acknowledging what the day was about. Jesus has this moment with his immediate family that comes in. And in chapter 12, he says this, Who is my brother and who are my brothers? Or, I'm sorry, back in 46. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. And someone told him, Your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to talk to you. He replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And so Jesus shows them and gives them a glimpse of what family is to look like. Jesus gives us a, a, a picture that kind of flips the script on our current culture and what family is supposed to be about. You see, Jesus places an emphasis not just on our immediate family, it's not to take away from that, but he puts an, a, an emphasis on what, what I might call our first family. He puts an emphasis on our first family and what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus. And he really paints this picture that our first family is our church family. It is the family of God. And he shows us and gives us a glimpse. Jesus, Jesus says no to them which would have been a big slap in the face, most scholars think, as Jesus, many think that his father had passed on, and so he would have been viewed as a patriarch of his family. And so for him to not acknowledge them was kind of like a, wait, hold on here just a second, something's off. But Jesus was just emphasizing what it looks like to be a part of a church family and to follow a family of God and what it looks like to live life together. It very much speaks to our fathers as it gives them a vision for what it is to be a dad. And it kind of gives them a glimpse and an a, a example of what am I going to do to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And for our seniors, it helps them see that they have a family that is really, really big. And so from the very beginning of time, as, as they were launched into this earth, they begin to see what it looks like. At that first week of life. And to our graduates, I know this year has been bizarre, but what I want you to hear is this part right here, where we think about this family of God and what it's been in your life. You see, that first week, this marble represents one week. That first week of your life, as you begin to think about life, and, and you and, and, and mom and dad begin to think about as you were being born, and even before that, as God began to think about what you would be like in life far before you were thought in mom and dad's mind. And as you grew in a belly, they began to think about and pray for you to be a healthy baby and to know who Jesus is. And as you look forward, that first week of life came and mom and dad in the hospital began to think about your life. And they began to read to you and sing to you and bring you to church, introduce you to people who knew who Jesus was. And that first week came and you were brought into this earth and God planned something special for you. The first week came and not only that, but several weeks to follow. Lots of weeks came and, and the weeks passed by and as time went on, you begin to see all this time that happened. And 52 weeks went by and that year one, man, I called my, I have a one year old right now. I called my wife the other day. I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm getting Jude out of the washer. Year one was a hard year. And, and now don't call anybody. Hang on there. She was watching him and she was folding clothes. But year one, as you follow a baby around, mom and dad literally just followed you everywhere. They waited on the moment when you would just simply roll over. And then they begin to wait on those moments. And you went into elementary school and you begin to take those first steps. And you begin to go to kindergarten and you begin to go to all those places. You begin to go to Journeyland and walk in. All these weeks pass by. All those first moments, your first ball game, the first school program you were in, and they keep showing up. And not only did mom and dad show up, but your church family began to invest in you. And as you walk through nursery and Journeyland and elementary school and VBS after VBS, and you begin to go to the first overnight camp, all this time passed by. And then you got to junior high. And honestly, that was, that was kind of weird, to just tell you the truth. Junior high was kind of bizarre. But still, people kept family rallied around you. And D-group leaders and huddle leaders kept coming. And then high school came. 
and high school came in and you went to get your license and you begin to walk through what high school looks like and you begin to do freshman and sophomore and junior year and, and man, senior year has been so weird, let's throw a few out. But you begin to see what it looks like. 936 weeks from zero to 18 graduates, your church family has poured into you alongside mom and dad to show you what it looks like to follow Jesus, to show you what it looks like to follow Jesus in all things. And I want you to stop and think for just a moment, all of those moments, all of those times that were there in which you were told, hey man, I want you to follow this guy named Jesus, and here's what it looks like to follow him. All the relationships, all the people, 936 weeks invested in you. And I want you to think about that for a second. My dad had 10 brothers and sisters. And I, 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 I asked, I'd ask him often, Dad, what's, what was that like to have 10 brothers and sisters? And he would tell me a little bit about it. And I said, well, what about when you graduated high school? What, what happened? He said, your bags were on the porch when you got home from graduation. And he said, you had to leave. He said, the door closed for you and you had to go and there wasn't room for everybody. People were already claiming real estate on your bed. And so I begin to think about that in this moment. And I want you to hear one thing, that the family of God has not shut the door on you. We've invested 936 weeks and we expect a lot out of you. We expect you to go and be light wherever you land. And if you're, going not, if you're going out of this state and won't be around Memorial Road, guess what? We know some people because the family of God goes beyond Memorial Road. But we want you to know that whether it's in August, those first few weeks of college, whether you're 25, 30, 40 years old, whether you find yourself in a deep, dark place of doubt, whether you find yourself in a place like you can't recover from a sin, I want you to know that your church family understands that. They've been there, and we still have space for you in this life, in this faith, in this church. In fact, I would reference Luke 15, the prodigal son, in which the father rejoices when the son returns. And so I want you to hear me say that you always have space here in God's family. And if you, you don't remember much else, remember that, that, that there is a group of people here who got you. They have you. They've got you figured out as far as life and faith goes because they've been before you. And so anything that life brings, know that we're here for you and we're willing to invest a whole lot more. And that really goes for all of us as we try to walk through being a disciple of Jesus. It goes for our dads as we re-envision what Jesus thought what a dad should look like and what family should look like. And as we think about following Jesus, we think about how Jesus cast a vision for us to follow him in all things, first and foremost, and that we have a first family here, a family of God. I'm going to pray for our seniors, and then I'm going to start announcing their names. Before you, um, before, just so you know what our order looks like to follow here, I'm going to pray, I'm going to call their names out, and then Jeff Floyd, one of our shepherds, is going to come and pray uh, over our senior class. And then if you'll stay tuned, our elders actually have a really special announcement uh, that we want you to hear. And so if you'll stay tuned here in just a second. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for time together that we could um, gather in a, a really kind of bizarre way online. But Father, we know that you are present. We know that you are uh, with us. God, we pray that you will help us in all ways to see you and see our church family as our first family. God, I pray for our graduates. They've had an a interesting year. And God, I, I have been um, so encouraged by their resilience and all the things that they have been flexible on and changed. God, I know at some point in life, you will use those things for your kingdom. God, I just ask a prayer of blessing over them, and I begin this prayer as we read their names. Father, you will bless them, that you will walk with them wherever they're headed, whether that's job or military or school, wherever they're going, Father, I pray that you will walk with them, that they will remain close to you in all things. God, we thank you for all that you've done in their lives so far. We thank you for this family of God that has blessed them. Father, we're thankful for their presence here at this church family because they have blessed us. Father, we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. I'll begin reading off our senior class of 2020 names. If you have a, uh, if uh, their, their pictures and names are on the app, 
If you have the app, you can go there and find them. You also can find them at um, mrcc.org backslash 2020 seniors if you want to glance at that as I read them off. You can see a picture of them. They'll also be on the screen here. Our first senior is Mr. Hayden Aaron. Ryan Ackerman. Ethan Brummett. Tig Campney. Jackson Kennard. Tressie Chapman. Ketch Davidson. Grace Davis. Eden Dow. Jackson Dow. Angelina Emerson. Michael Forehand. Jackson Giger. Andrew Ginsberg. Grace Heisel. Grant Hill. Maya Hogan. Abigail Johnson. Vagan Jones. Noah Kenny. Ben King. Kennedy Clem. Jonathan Lynn. Maxwell Linder. Mary Lobaugh. Kennedy Maddox. Kale Nard. Gabby Phelps. Remington Platner. Corey Price. Canton Proctor. Will Ratcliffe. Yamasi Red Eagle. Jessica Vaughn. Gavin Welch. Peyton Welch. Katie Wisdom. Harrison Wright. Riley Yehola. Also not pictured is Kane Badorf, Connor Garnett, Lucy Lee, Gabe Nichols, and Cole Russell, who could not be here this morning or, or couldn't be in the show. Um, I'm going to invite one of our elders, uh, Jeff Floyd, to come up and pray over them. Just a reminder, our elders have an announcement uh, here at the close of service. Uh, I'll bring Jeff in.